I really do help hope you're enjoying how I'm explaining this whole shebang for you because it really is as simple. Now, obviously, there's a lot more to this. That's why I have an entire course. But if you understand, I want you to be able to walk before you could run. If you have no problem walking and balancing yourself, then you can sprint across the finish line. So let's understand how we can basically create rules for the rest of our content. So here I have an H1 tag. So what I need to do is select the tag, select the source, and hit the plus symbol. It's really that simple. Now, once again, Dreamweaver is going to make some assumptions here, but I don't want to make those same assumptions. I simply want to create a rule for the H1 tag. So I don't need to have the word body in there. It's not necessary. It's redundant. Okay, so if I create an entire, I can have a site that has 50, 60 rules. I don't want everything to say body H1, body paragraph, body, 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 and drive myself nuts. So we can simply type in the word H1 and hit the return key. Now, CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, has a parent-child relationship. So by default, the H1 tag is the default of the same body text font. Not the size, by the way, but the font itself and whatever color the body was, it's going to inherit. So that's just how it works. Now, what I want to share with you now is I want to go to the T for typing, and we're going to use something called M sizes, E-M. And M is equal to the height of your default body copy. So right now, my default body copy is 17 pixels. Very important step here. If you're watching this on Udemy, you'd want to basically take a note up to the top right, or if you want to write this down on a piece of paper, or your iPhone or iPad, or Galaxy, or whatever you're using. Okay, so in this particular case, my M is equal to 17 pixels, because that's my base font. So in this particular case, M equals 17 pixels. So if I was to make my H1 tag, and again, I just want to share with you good technique here, for font size, I want to make this one and a half times, so I'm going to basically pick M here, and I'm going to type in 1.5. 1.5 M would be 1.5 17 pixels. So that's going to be the size of my H1 tag. Now notice that that body follows is close to the H2 tag. So I want to make this actually a little bit bigger. I'm going to make this 1.8 M. Now if I make this, uh, uh, just lost my train of thought here. If I made this 34 pixels, Okay. 34, 34 pixels would be 2M because 17 pixels times 2. I know for those of you that slept through fourth grade math class, you're probably, your head's going to fall off your shoulders. But if my base font is 17 pixels and I was to make this 2, that would exactly be the same as making this. So here is 2M. So that would exactly be the same as making that 17PX. I'm sorry, not, I'm just not paying attention here. I meant to say 34px, 17 times 2. You know, talking and chewing gum at the same time. Anyway, so you get that. So 17 pixels is my base font. 1m equals 17 pixels. So if I was to make this 2m, that'd be exactly the same thing as 2m, em, will be the same as 17 times 2. So you can make this any size you want, but if you go with relations, therefore if I change my body copy, everything is going to adjust based on my body copy. Very powerful technique. So if my body copy gets bigger, my fonts will get bigger in my H1, H2, H3. I want to make this back to 1.8. Okay. Now, in addition to that, I could choose, because let's say in this particular case, I do want to change the colors. I'm going to make this maybe a blue, dark blue, and I also want to come down here. Uh, again, there's all different types of settings in here. I can underline this. I can overline this, et cetera, et cetera. I can give this a drop shadow. I will talk about more of that in my full version on Udemy. But right now, I want to transform this to be all capitalized. So the difference being is this is uppercase here. Notice the difference. And this is capitalized. I want to make this uppercase. Now, let's understand something. The advantage of what I just did is I didn't have to type it in an uppercase. I just typed it in using, you know, the first, you capitalize a sentence, obviously. And then I could just set it up from there. It's really that simple, okay? Now, CSS is very, very different than style sheets for, say, Quirk Express or PageMaker or InDesign or FrameMaker or any other program you're using.
So it has a very set rule structure. The web is a very dot the I, cross the T kind of application. Okay. Now, in addition to this, let's have some fun here. Okay, what, you're not having fun yet? Well, watch this. So in addition to basically creating rules for a single tag, we can create rules for multiple tags by separating that tag with a comma. So here's an example. Here's an H2 tag. I select this source, I hit the plus symbol, and I'm going to say H2 comma, not space, H3 comma H4 comma H5. I'm not going to do H6 and just hit the return key. Now, what I can do by using this technique is talk to multiple tags at the same time because I've separated them with commas. Now, out of all these choices in here, what would I probably not want to change? Okay, let's think about this really logically and intuitively. If these represent different sizes, I would be shooting myself in the foot by changing this to a font size. That would be de defeating the purpose, wouldn't it? But I can change the font, the font color. Let's make this maybe a dark red. Okay, let's come down here and let's make this, let's scroll down here for a second, and let's make this capitalized. So here's a dark red capitalized, anything that falls under these rules. If I have an H2, H3, H4, H5, it's going to fall under those rules. Now, why is it not affecting the H1 tag? Well, because I have a separate rule for that. So once you hit style, here's your rule selector right there. It's really, really that simple. Okay, so in addition to that, let's create a rule structure for our strong tag. So I'm going to select the tag. In order to affect the tag, I need to select the tag. I'm going to select the source, which is our style, and with the plus symbol. Now in this particular case, I'm only concerned about the strong regardless where it is. If it's inside of an H1 tag, an H2 tag, I simply want to create a rule for strong. Not strong paragraph, not strong H2. I want to make it more omnipotent. I want to make it more generic. Okay, so a strong tag. So if I have a strong tag, the only thing I want to do here is change the color. Let's go ahead and just make this a dark green color. So anytime I have something that's strong, it's going to be dark green because that's the rule, right? Makes sense? Now notice it's called strong, not strongs. So exactly how it's spelled according to the rules of HTML is exactly the rule structure that you write. If you don't spell it correctly, it's not going to work. Now we can do the same thing with the emphasis tag. So if I double click this and I make the italic, which is the emphasis tag, I could do the same thing. So select the tag, select the source, hit the plus symbol, and again I'm just concerned about the EM tag right now. So let's do this. Let's make the text color, let's make something very different. Let's make it maybe this uh, this dark orange color and just because we can, just because we can, Let's put a line through it. So text text decoration here, underline, overline, line through. I'm just going to put a line through. I did that visually so you can just see what's going on there. Okay. So in a nutshell, this is how we create CSS rules, vocabulary here, CSS rules for our selected tags. In order to affect the tag, you need to select the tag. Once you select the tag, you can create a CSS rule for the name of that tag. Now in our next video, before we get into FTP, I want to show you some other little tricks that you can do with CSS rules. So stay tuned.